Thank you, Joe, for leading us in the call to worship today. Welcome, everybody. We're so glad you tuned in this morning, whether you're watching now live or if you're watching later on the recorded video. We want to welcome you today. We're so excited to have you worship with us here at Eau Claire Baptist Church. We are continuing our virtual worship until we can meet again, which we hope will be later in the month of June. So until then, uh, we want to remind you that we continue praying for each of you. For any guests who are joining today, uh, welcome this morning. We normally gather at 4427 North Main Street. And when our building is open again for services, we invite you to join us in person also. Today, we're going to begin a series talking about our great hope. The Bible has much to say about hope. In fact, as I read this week, perhaps one of the greatest and shortest sermons ever preached about hope is based on the three words from Psalm 42, verse 5, hope in God. And our encouragement to you today is to remind you that we do have a great hope in our great God. And so I invite you to join us in worship this morning from your home as we sing together. Uh, you know, the hymn writers are great to remind us of the great hope we have in Jesus. And so wherever you are, I hope you can follow along with the words on the screen as we sing together the solid rock. Would you join us as we sing this morning? We do want to have a prayer time today, and after our prayer time, I'm excited that we have a special guest with us that's going to sing three songs for us this morning, so you'll be surprised as well. Uh, I'll introduce our special guest for you in just a moment, but we do want to have a special prayer time today. There's so many needs in the life of the church that I want to tell you about this morning um, as we're reminded to cast all of our cares upon the Lord for He cares for us. And within our own church family today, there's several requests I want to mention and ask you to keep in your prayers as well. Uh, first of all, we have a praise. I am so excited today to tell you that our very own Richard is being discharged from the hospital today. It has been a long two and a half week journey uh, for him and for his family, as you can imagine. And, but, but we rejoice today uh, that Richard will be returning home, and we continue to uplift Richard and Carolyn in our prayers. Also, we want to continue praying for Miss Bobby. Uh, she was in a car accident earlier in the week, as many of you know, and so uh, she does have a broken sternum. Uh, initially, they were looking to let her be released on Saturday or Friday, I believe, but she's having to stay a little bit longer. So please continue to lift Miss Bobby up to the Lord. Uh, Miss Bobby, we love you so much. And uh, also, two other requests. I want us to pray for a young man by the name of Ryan today. He, uh, several years ago, had a kidney transplant. Uh, someone that is connected with our church actually donated her kidney to Ryan. And so for whatever reason, Ryan's body now, after seven years, is rejecting the kidney. And so we want to lift Ryan to the Lord this morning. And then also uh, a, a co-worker and friend of one of our own church members, Anna, 
Uh, the friend's name is Heather, who passed away unexpectedly this week. Heather leaves an 11-year-old son. And so as we pray today, I invite you right where you are to bow with me before the Lord as we lift these specific needs to Him. And others of you who are watching today, I know you have needs in your life. So I invite you to join me as we bow before the Lord together and take our needs to him. Would you bow with me right where you are as we pray together today, please? Father, today we gather together, while not together physically, Lord, we gather together as one in the body of Christ today, as your children. And Father, we know that uh, there are so many hearts that are heavy today in the life of our own church family, Lord. There have been so many needs this week, uh, but Lord, you're aware of every single one. And today we lift up those who need a special touch from heaven today. Uh, Lord, we rejoice uh, that you've been with Richard and with Carolyn through this long journey. We continue to lift Richard up to you today. Lord, we rejoice that he's coming home and we pray for him as he recovers. Lord, we lift Miss Bobby up to you today. We love her so much and we thank you for protecting her and Mr. Lee in the auto accident earlier in the week. We pray for her, Lord, as her body is healing from a broken sternum, as they continue treating her. We lift her up to you this day. Father, we pray for this young man by the name of Ryan, whose body is now rejecting the kidney, Lord. We pray for his healing. We pray for a touch from heaven for him. And Lord, we lift up uh, the family of Heather today. We pray that you surround this family, Lord, as, as they grieve such an unexpected and tragic loss. We pray for her son today. Lord, for others who are watching now or later who need a touch from you, Father, we want you to know that we call out to you. Today, Lord Jesus, we call out to you and we lean upon you and our great hope is in you, our great God. Thank you, Lord, for being our hope. We ask in the name of Jesus, and everybody said together, amen. Well, I'm excited today to introduce one of our very own children here at Eau Claire Baptist Church. Uh, we miss being together so much, and over the next few weeks, it's my goal to incorporate here or there uh, someone to join us, and so our very own Kennedy has come today to sing to us. She's going to sing, Jesus Loves Me Down in My Heart, and also Amazing Grace. So you listen, you worship, you sing along as Kennedy comes to lead us. Kennedy, you come this morning.
everybody's clapping from home. Amen. Good job. Thank you so much, Kennedy. Uh, Kennedy's actually going to help me in just a few minutes with a sermon illustration too. So Kennedy, great job today. And I look forward to inviting others uh, from our Eau Claire Baptist Church family to join us in worship each Sunday while we continue in virtual worship. Thank you so much, Kennedy and Joe, for helping us this morning. Well, I want to share with you today a message about hope. As I mentioned earlier, perhaps one of the greatest and shortest sermons ever preached about hope from Psalm 42, verse 5, are the three words, hope in God. Perhaps that is the best sermon that we could ever, um, ever hope to hear and ever hope to be reminded of today. But I want to share with you from Psalm 42. If you have a Bible with you, feel free to follow along with me there as we talk about some lessons of hope today. You know, in Psalm 42, we read a couple of things about hope. And I'm reminded today uh, to, for all of us, hope does not come naturally. You know, it is not the natural bent of the human spirit. It is not the natural bent of our lives to naturally have hope. Hoping in God does not come naturally. In fact, if you look with me at Psalm 42, verse 5, we're reminded of this when the psalmist himself, I mean, it's so clear about his struggle of hope. But in Psalm 42, verse 5, he writes, Why are you in despair, O my soul? And why have you become disturbed within me? You see, we are reminded today that hope does not come naturally. And if we can learn anything about hope today and learn anything from Psalm 42, it is, is that we must preach hope diligently and forcefully. We must be intentional to have great hope, to remind ourselves of the great hope we have. For if we fail to remind ourselves of this, we will easily give way to a downcast and disquieted spirit. Have you been there like the psalmist who says in Psalm 42 verse 5, why are you in despair, O oh, my soul? And why have you become disturbed within me? If you read through Psalm 42, you'll see all the many emotions the psalmist dealt with. He dealt with despair. Have you been there? He dealt with discontentment. He dealt with being disturbed. In fact, in verse 3, the psalmist wrote, My tears have been my food day and night. Maybe you've been there in, in being disturbed in your heart and in your soul. What about doubt? We all know what doubt is. In verse 3 of Psalm 42, the psalmist even said this, They say to me all day long, where is your God? Have you been there? And even it sometimes leads to being despondent. You know, I was reminded of this uh, earlier in the week. My youngest son uh, so now, um, well, initially, many of you know that he broke his foot a few weeks back. And so I went to Target and he was asking for a toy. And so I brought him home, one of his favorite toy truck sets. And he loved that. In the midst of a broken foot, he loved it. The challenge with that is now every time he hears me say, I'm going to Target, he expects that I'm going to bring him back a toy. And yesterday I went to Target and I came back in the house and he greeted me in the kitchen and looked up at me. Did you bring me a toy, Dad? No toy today, son. And I want to tell you, it was like 
despondency, depression, despair hit him all at once as I could watch every bit of hope drain out of his little three-year-old body as he just stooped over in a moment of despair. We've all been there. The psalmist was there. And so I remind you today that hope doesn't come naturally. You know, don't beat yourself up if you've been struggling with hopelessness. Don't be so hard on yourself if you've been struggling with doubt or uh, discontentment or even despair. But yet, like the psalmist, we are reminded that having hope is really a great struggle. It, It is a deep fight and struggle to maintain our hope in God. In fact, look at verse 5 again of Psalm 42. As the psalmist, we see his struggle when he asks himself, Why are you in despair, O my soul? Why have you become disturbed within me? You know, growing up, every Saturday night at 6 p.m., my station was always tuned to TBS as I watched Saturday night championship wrestling. Would you believe even today in downtime, I will still watch old YouTube videos of those wrestlers who got paid a lot of money likely to come out and just perform a big stunt show. You know, having hope is just that, isn't it? It it is a deep wrestling match, often within the depths of our own heart and soul. We wrestle and fight and struggle to maintain our hope in God. But I want you to know today, and as I thought of this imagery, I want to share it with you, that as John Piper reminds us, about our great hope, John Piper says there is a deep emotional reservoir of hope. And we see this in Psalm 42. Please read through it later today. Uh, but, But we have within us a deep reservoir of great hope. You know, it's kind of like uh, the city of Columbia. For those of you that, that live here and for students in school, uh, they learn about our great river systems. And we're reminded of even our own water supply here in the city of Columbia. There, there are two major supplies. There's the Lake Murray water supply, which uh, drains down out of the Lake Murray Dam into the Saluda River. And the city of Columbia works to get that water filtered. And then there's also the reservoir from the Broad River uh, Diversion Canal, which if you remember the great flood of 2015, you might remember that canal was compromised and we had no water for several days, even weeks. Well, you know, just as we have a great reservoir, a great supply of water coming from two sources in our own city, so too we have a great reservoir of hope. That, that Those great reservoirs are a combination of where hope and faith meet one another. In fact, Kennedy's going to bring us an illustration. She's going to set it up behind me. So come on, Kennedy, set that up behind me here. And uh, what she has is a gallon jug that is from our kitchen here at Eau Claire Baptist Church. Oh, oh man, I miss the kitchen. I miss the fellowship meals together. I miss our times together here so much. But just as you see that empty uh, gallon jug behind me, I wonder today how many just feel so empty. I wonder today how many of you just feel so drained and exhausted and just completely dry. You know, the psalmist dealt with this. Listen to some of the great things the psalmist said because he was reminded that he had a great reservoir of hope, that he had a great supply. You know, Lake Murray provides uh, millions of gallons of water like this empty gallon jug that is behind me. I think about our reservoir of water, the millions of gallons of water that 
uh, that Lake Murray provides. And with all of the water sources, our city filters through millions of waters per day. And I want to remind you, like the psalmist, that we have a great reservoir of hope. We have a source of hope that that never runs dry. We have a great source of hope that is never empty. We have a great God who fills our supply over and over and over again. We have a source of hope in the Lord God. Listen to the psalmist in Psalm 42 verse 1. As the deer pants for water brooks, so my soul pants for you, O God. My soul thirsts for you, O God, for the living God. Can I ask you today, is your soul in need of a great hope. Can I remind you today, just as the psalmist understood in verse 2, my soul thirsts for God, the living God. In verse 5, here's the good news of the story, because while the psalmist wrestles with the hope that he's struggling to maintain in his circumstance, and while so many today are wrestling and struggling to maintain a great hope within your own circumstance. So verse 5, the answer and the solution is this. In the midst of all the psalmist is dealing with, the answer in verse 5 is this. Hope in God, for I shall again praise Him for the help of His presence. Hope in God, the psalmist says, for I will again praise Him. You know, one of the greatest struggles for me as a pastor is not being able to be with our people, especially those that have been in hospitals and those who have been sick. It's been a great struggle not to go and be with them and pray with them and hold their hand and see them. This morning on my way to church today, I stopped by the parking lot of the Heart Hospital and I lifted my hand over just in front of the sign of the hospital and snapped a picture and sent it to one who was there in the hospital who, praise God, is being discharged today. It reminds me, as the psalmist says, hope in God for I shall again praise Him for the help of His presence. And then we're reminded last today from the writer of Hebrews, and I want to leave you with this thought about our great hope. And we'll talk about hope over the next few weeks together. But in Hebrews chapter 6, verse 11, the writer says this, and this is my prayer for each of us today, Hebrews 6, verse 11. And we desire that each one of you show the same diligence. That that diligence is what we read in Psalm 42. That diligence to tap into that reservoir of great hope. That diligence that says, I'm not giving up. That diligence that says, I will not be defeated. That diligence that says, God is my source of hope. And we desire, Hebrews Hebrews 6 verse 11, that each one of you show the same diligence so as to realize the full assurance of hope until the end. You know, we don't know. Are these the last days? We don't know. Could this be preparation for the last days? We can't say for certain, but there are sure a lot of signs, aren't there? And the scriptures tell us to watch and pray. And for believers in Jesus, we have full assurance of this great hope until the very end. Can I remind you today that God is your source of hope? Amen? God is your source of hope. And on those days when you are tempted to give in to despair, and maybe it's those days that all you can do is just muster enough strength 
to get out of bed and get dressed for the day, even on days when that's all you can do, on those days when you are giving into a disturbed spirit, a spirit of doubt, a spirit of despondency even, on, the, on those days like the psalmist when you are struggling and wrestling to find hope, can I ask you to be reminded of our great reservoir of our God who is the source of hope and His supply never runs dry. I invite you today to join me as we have a great hope in a great God And I invite you to bow together with me as we pray. So join me as we close in a moment of prayer. Father, today in the name of Jesus, we have a great hope. Lord, today we are grateful for your presence. We are grateful for your power. Father, for those like the psalmist who are struggling with Uh, discontentment, struggling with despair, struggling with doubt for those for whom it is a great struggle of emotional and mental strength to find hope today. Lord, I pray today like the psalmist that they would be reminded of Psalm 42 verse 5, for my hope is in God and I will sing of Him Again, Lord, today remind us of your strength and we thank you for your presence. We pray in Jesus' name. Thank you for joining us this morning. Would you listen as Joe plays and then I'll uh, give us a virtual blessing together. So listen as Joe plays a postlude for us today. as we dismiss, may the God of all hope fill your hearts and fill your lives today with His presence. May the Spirit of the Lord bless you, keep you. May He go before you. Have a blessed week in Jesus' name. Thanks for joining us this morning. And if you would please clap with me for Kennedy today. Kennedy, thank you for leading us in worship. Thank you, Joe. God bless you, everybody. Have a great day in the Lord. Can't wait to see you again. Blessings to you this week.